Welcome to worship this Ash Wednesday at Trinity and welcome to our friends from University Baptist Church um, and anybody else who is visiting with us here in person and those of you who are joining us on the live stream. Ash Wednesday begins a season of Lent with a public act of confession. We acknowledge that we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory and we repent and return to our loving creator. Acutely aware of our failure and frailty, we express our utter reliance on God's saving grace. Ashes are an ancient symbol of repentance, sorrow, and sacrifice. This Lent at Trinity, we are focusing on the life and faith of one of Jesus's most well-known disciples. In Peter, we see a person who is both steadfast and unsteady, a dear friend and a betrayer, a follower and a wanderer. With the help of words from the beloved hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, we will look for ourselves in the stepping stones of Peter's story and will reflect on the stages of our own faith journeys as well as who and what has shaped us along the way. And so this evening, as we begin the season of Lent, let us turn inward and tune our hearts, as the first line of Come Thou Fount sings, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Before an orchestra plays together, they must all tune their instruments. The cacophony of this process may be very loud and create lots of dissonance, but it's an important and necessary step in order to create harmony and melody. And so this Lent, how can you tune the instrument of your heart so that it aligns with God? Friends, will you rise and body your in spirit for the call to worship? Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious. Confess to the Lord your God, for God is merciful. Repent to the Lord your God, for God is slow to anger. Praise the Lord your God, for God abounds in steadfast love. Worship the Lord your God. Together let us worship our God. Let us sing our first hymn. The words are printed in your bulletin. You may be seated. Will you join me in the prayer for illumination, which is printed in your bulletin? Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Tune our hearts to sing your grace and declare your praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our first reading this evening is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. Listen to the word of God. 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be brighter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Our second reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They want God on their side. Why do we fast, but you don't see? Why humble ourselves, but you don't notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast days and you oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly." Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and the Lord will say, Here I am. If ye remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, Then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs and parched places, and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I said when we began, 
Ash Wednesday's theme comes from, for this year, comes from the first line of Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Here's a brief reflection by the Reverend Sarah Speed about what it means to her to tune our hearts. This is titled Alignment. I have never tuned a piano, but I understand it takes hours. Small notes plucked repeatedly like rain on a tin roof. Some things cannot be rushed. Some things require a steady hand, a listening ear, the intimacy of familiarity. Tuning an instrument and falling in love are both like that. Maybe that is why we pray to God, tune my heart, because we are desperate to be pulled into alignment. We are desperate to add our voice to the song, to get lost in a dance, to be in harmony with the melody of the universe. I've never tuned a piano before, but I still pray, God, pull me into alignment. Show me the notes to sing. That was good timing, because that was the end of Sarah's essay, so now, now these are my words. When I think of tuning an instrument, I think of my high school days in the marching band. I played the mellophone, which is the marching equivalent of a French horn. It just looks like a big trumpet. We had a lot of fun in marching band, but one of the most intense and serious moments happened each time before we marched onto the field for a performance. Everyone who played a brass instrument would get into a circle, and everyone who played a woodwind instrument would get into their circle, and the percussionists would also get into their circle. And each of these circles would warm up and ideally tune together. And once these subsections were done tuning, if we had the time, we'd gather as a full band under our director's guidance and go through a warm up of tuning all together. This was the final prep time we would have, our last chance we would get to fix something before going out on the field to compete or play in front of football fans. It was our last time to come together before going out on the field as a team, a band creating something together. Tuning is not just something one instrument does on its own. If you're playing with others, you must make sure you're in tune with one another. Lent is this way, too. This sanctuary and live stream audience are full of individuals who have already thought about or will think about this evening how we will grow closer to God over the next 46 days. We are a lot of individuals discerning the ways our hearts ache to be tuned. But like the marching band, the tuning of our individual hearts has an impact on the whole community. This metaphorical band is relying upon one another to do the work of tweaking valves and tightening strings so that God's grace can be sung out, moving the world into a more just and loving place. I invite you to hold this metaphor in your mind. I'm going to attempt to play the audio of a YouTube video. It's a warm-up chorale by Carolina Crown, which is a drum corps band from South Carolina. It's a professional marching band that exists. 
Um, a band director is leading it, and band directors do tend to love hearing their voices, and so you will hear him giving feedback and, and passionately yelling sometimes. I don't want that to distract you from the beautiful work the band is doing. But listen to this and pay attention to how your body feels as they build up and gradually add to these harmonies toward their summit. dissonance. But do you hear the beauty that happens when we gradually tweak things and add layers of tuned notes and harmonies with one another? And the impact that has and the grace that can be shown when all of us individually do this work of a Lenten journey but come together on Sundays and throughout the weeks to worship and praise God and read God's word together. That is our task this Lenten season. Will you join me in this unison prayer for forgiveness which is printed in your bulletin? Holy God, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned by our own fault, in our, in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Have mercy on us, O God. We have not loved you or our neighbors with our whole hearts. Have mercy on us, O God. We have failed to do justice and to love mercy and to live humbly. Have mercy on us, O God. We have left many things undone that, we, that would bring justice and equality to the human community. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have desecrated the natural world that you created in beauty and rich diversity. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We continually store up possessions as earthly treasure and neglect the true treasure that you offer. Have mercy on us, O oh God. With honesty, we confess our pride, our envy of others, our anger, our self-indulgence, 
our contempt for those who differ from us. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We begin a journey through the wilderness of Lent with the marks of our human brokenness upon us. O oh God, accompany us on the way. Forgive us when we stumble. Encourage us when we learn the way of discipleship. Bring us safely to the cross and to the empty tomb. Restore us to wholeness and embrace us in your steadfast love. Turn to us in your mercy, O God, and redeem us. Amen. This community relies upon each other to do the faithful work of tuning our hearts, of spending time with God, of listening for the Holy Spirit, of retelling these ancient stories of Christ and his friends. Lent is a time for us to return to our creator who formed us from the dust of the earth. Our lives are finite, so we want to spend every precious moment in tune with God, living whole and abundant lives, the kind of lives that we were created to lead. And so, in recognition of our origins in the earth, in acknowledgement of our finite days, we come this evening to receive ashes, and we remember that dust we are, and to dust we shall return. And remember what wonderful things the Holy One can do with dust. I will come down here. We have ashes and, and oil. Um, and I'll put a cross of ash on your face, if, or in your forehead. Um, if you would prefer um, the back of your hand, you're welcome to put your hand out. Um, or if you would just like a blessing, you're also welcome to come forward. Um, but it'll just be as, as you feel called to come forward, please join me up there.
Let us pray. Holy Creator, you fashioned us from the dust and you called us good, so very good. Your fingerprints remain all over us. Don't let us forget that we come from the earth and we will return to the earth and every day in between is a gift from you. Gifts are not meant to be encased in glass boxes and set high on a shelf lest they show any signs of use. No, you gave us this life in the hopes that we would live it fully, using it up and letting it develop signs of wear and tear and marvelous evidence that proves that we have lived. But some days we'd rather be safe and sound where nothing can touch us. It's a beautiful life, but the living can be so hard some days. All along our journeys, we get scraped knees and hurt feelings and mistakes and unexpected a diagnosis and a broken heart and painful endings and phone calls that change our lives in a moment. As the paths of our lives wander through hills and valleys, as we get caught in the rain and the soles of our shoes wear down, God, tune our hearts to hear your voice everywhere. If we listen closely, we can hear it now. It's in uncontrollable giggles and bird song at the window, the sizzle of a homemade meal on the stove, and melodies buried deep in our souls. God, this is a beautiful life, not because it's perfect, but because it is real. Journey with us, accompanying us as the path winds. Lift our heads to witness the majesty tucked around every detour. If we look closely, we might see your fingerprints. And if we listen deeply, we just might hear your voice calling us good, so very good. We pray all of this in your son's name who taught us to pray using the whatever words and language are closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we close our time with song. Hymn number 697, Take My Life. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 6.
beloved wanderers, as you leave this place this evening, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat and to run to the tomb and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, take heart, it is I, be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed, and both your ups and your downs you always belong to God. Go in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. <laughs>